Alright guys, so Fula with another video. Shout out to the whole LDBC. So in this video, man, I want to talk about that, um, I guess I want to dive in on that, uh, whole Cabral Fula, uh, Jenny Sushi, uh, situation. Um, you know, it's just a, it, when I look at that situation, it makes me know that there's like a bigger problem. Like there's a bigger problem up ahead. There's a bigger problem that's kind of already arrived too. And um, that bigger problem is the whole uh, liberal, the neoliberal progressive way of thinking. And basically this way of thinking is not going to do uh, let's just say uh, regular men and especially regular men who are black any good you know um So a video came out, well, well first let me talk about, like, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, you know, a reporter, a boxing reporter, uh, her name's, yeah, Jenny Sushi, she's actually uh, suing a professional boxer for basically making out with her, uh, and filling her up without her consent. So, you know, he already got his, I think he got suspended. His boxing license is suspended or something like that. And, you know, they're taking it serious. You know, she's looking for, of course, financial compensation for this act. Uh, but, you know, at first I was going to do a video about that, you know, just that act alone. And just go off of, oh, he shouldn't have done it. And, oh, you know, he needs to chill out and stuff like that. But, ironically, a clip came out. Two clips came out. Two telling clips came out. One clip showed the Jenny Sushi um, giving his team a lap dance. You know? Or giving one of his team members a lap dance. And this is, mind you, prior to the interview. A second clip came out where Kabrab Pulev, after the fight, he was taking pictures with, uh, you know, his fans and stuff like that. And she actually came up to Kabrab Pulev and gave gave him like a like one of those hugs, like one of those side hugs, you know, and asked for the interview but he's like you know give me like 10 more minutes I just need to take pictures with my fans you know that's what happened so with these new details basically one has to ask was he really at fault or did she make him or did or I should say lead him on to believe that you know those those exchanges were welcome. Judging by how she carried herself before that interview. And you know I look at this situation man. And I say to myself that, you know, 
it kind of bottles down into that whole me too movement, you know, where these women come out of the woodwork and say, oh, he did this to me, oh, he did that to me, oh, such and such did this to me, you know, and it's happening more and more with high profile athletes and even low profile athletes and even low, po low profile um, celebrities as well. And so I say to myself, you know, being a, you know, being a foreigner here, but being here for a, quite a while now to a point where like, I basically don't sound like a foreigner. But mind you, when I came here, trust me, I was fresh off the boat. You know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. But anyhow, when I look at these situations and stuff like that, it makes me that much more, that much more closed off to uh, people. Because you don't know what their intentions are, especially the opposite sex. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not going over that effer, effer bitch or nothing like that. No, nah, I'm not. I'm not with that. You know, I believe in respect and courtesy when it comes to women folk. You know, that's how I was raised from a in a tribal from a tribal perspective. But at the end of the day, now though, even if I see a woman that I like or something like that, I, I'm, you know, it's getting to a point now where you can't even make an advance because she may say, oh, he was harassing me or, oh, he was doing this. You know, like that's what kind of climate we're in now, man. Really and truly. Like, and I look at this incident right here, and I think to myself, like, damn, man, so, so now, when, when it comes to the neoliberal agenda, which includes fe feminism, LGBT rights, and all of that stuff, they're getting it to a point now where, like, it's okay for a woman to, like, give off, like, indications that she's interested, but it's wrong for a man to uh, act upon that. Yeah, I'm not saying that Cabral Pulev should have did it, you know, especially that it was on camera, mind you. But that's what it's coming down to now, man. I, I guess they think like women's empowerment means that you get to do you get to do what you want to a guy. Basically you get to you get to bait a guy into something and there may be consequences for baiting him into something. But you want to blame it all on the guy. It's all bad, man. And so that goes, uh, again, it goes into that feminist thing, man. It really goes into that, man. And so, you know, that's why it's like, it's like to a point where, it's to a point where, like, you know, for my, like, for my women, like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm actually dead set in, like, just going back home to my village and marrying a woman there, or, uh, I may just, like, mess around and just, like, marry a woman from, like, the same culture, preferably the same tribe, or at least a related culture and tribe because at this point like 
at this point, it's, it's getting to a point now where and I'm not trying to pigeonhole all American women. I'm not trying to pigeonhole all of them. No, not at all. But what I'm saying, it's getting to a point where saying hi to a woman could be like, it could get you in trouble, basically. That's what it's getting to, you know? And the reversal of that, the, the, the reversal of this is that, you know, with Cabral Pula's actions, what many people are going to say now, uh, they're, they're, they're going to call this toxic masculinity. And so they're going to say that he was going to be overbearing, this, that, and the other, and the, the like thereof. But what what they won't say is I'm just I'm just giving a hypothetical example. If Kabra Pulev wore a skirt or wore a dress and some nails, those same those same feminists, those same toxic to, uh, excuse me, toxic masculinity um, basically flag bearers would say, oh, he's just embracing his feminine side. Or, oh, he's just, he's just getting in touch with feminism. He, he, he's finding out what it is to be a woman. They would say things like that. So, you know, that, you know, this is just a bigger picture. I'm, I'm looking at the bigger picture of this incident. And I'm just saying, man, like, like, it, it, this is what, this is what these liberals want, you know. I, I, I yeah, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to do an over exaggeration or reach or anything like that. But it's really to, this is really aimed at. I mean, I, man, yeah, I'm gonna be crucified for it. But this, all this stuff is aimed at. At blacks, man. At the end of the day, this is aimed at blacks because even in my country, they're trying to push this liberal crap, man. They're trying to push transgender. They're trying to push homosexuality. They're trying to push this fake version of feminism, man. And it's just like crap. A lot of us are taking this bait, man. So it's like, man. And so this incident right here, man, just proves that, like, if you a nigga out on these streets, man, you gotta, you gotta be able to read, engage people from a distance, man, because they may, unfortunately, they may not be. You may be sincere, but they may not be sincere. Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, still Cabral Pulev shouldn't have done that on camera. He should have did it behind closed doors. But I mean, like, after that lap dance, I mean, it, it's hard to blame that dude. I mean, like, she, I mean, everything was basically everything was out to see. I mean, her, I don't think she had a bra on, you know, boobies were grinning, meaning her nipples were hard, the cleavage was out, you know, so yeah, man, so, yeah, that's, it's not, it's not a good look. Now, I don't know if she'll get money after this comes out, you know, after this footage came out. But it just goes to show, man, what time it is with a lot of these women out here. You know, and I'm going to be real. This kind of feminism they're pushing is like anti-family structure. Basically, it's like anti-family union in the bigger spec of things. You know? So, you know, I'm 
go. That's all I got for now, guys. I just wanted to give my two cents about this, about this particular situation. Uh, I'm going to be honest, too. Like, a little, a little fun fact about me. I would say, like, 95% of the time, I am by myself, minding my own business. The other 5% of the time, if I'm surrounded by people, it's with my coach, either my track coach or my boxing coach, or either, like, really, really just, like, tight-knit friends that I mess with, you know, that are sincere, because, like, Honestly, man, like, people like this Jimmy Sushi and stuff like that, imagine, imagine if she's putting herself in danger, right? Because, look, imagine if, especially Cabral Pula being a boxer, right? And I'm not saying he would do this. I'm, uh, that's not what I'm saying. But imagine if, you know, he went for the kiss, he went for the groping and stuff like that, and she pulled away. What if, uh, what, what if he wouldn't take no for an answer? I mean, I don't know if she was thinking down the lines before doing her little uh, business before that. You know? So, that's all I got for now, guys. Leave your thoughts, leave your comments. Fula signing out. On Jara.